Okay, it's finally colour day. I've got the equipment together, I've got the chemicals. It's finally time to start trying to develop Super 8 in colour. And I'm going to use a ECN2 process, which I went through on a previous film. So for this, I'm going to need CD3, which is colour to 3, potassium bromide, sodium sulfite, sodium carbonate, sodium bicarbonate, sodium hydroxide, potassium ferrocyanide, and sodium bromide, potassium metabisulfite, and for fixer, sodium thiosulfate. Okay, so you're all probably wondering what the hell is wrong with my picture. Well, it's glorious standard definition today on a Sony Video 8 video camera from the uh, mid to late 80s. I'll, I'll say a little bit more about this camera at the very end. But anyway, I'm using this format to film myself today because I want to make things as difficult as I possibly can for myself. Oh, did I say difficult? Uh, I meant difficult and expensive. So, not only do I have enough chemicals to poison half of London, but I bought one of these, a Cine Still temperature control system. Oh yes, I'm not going to mess about with all that temperature control business that I've heard so much about. I just paid through the nose for a rather delightful looking machine like this to do it for me. What a beauty. And I'll show you how this thing works in case you, uh, you don't know. You, uh, you put this end firmly up your ass, and then, no wait, that's a different video for a different time. So the idea is you put the thing into a tub of water, and it makes a bain-marie kind of arrangement, where all your developer and fixer and everything go in the water, and it keeps them all a nice even temperature. This little temperature in the corner here says 41, that's the temperature I want it at. If I turn this little wheel, I can adjust it to whatever temperature to a tenth of a degree, which is very nice. And the flashing number here is the current temperature. All right, so look at it go. That's, it's switched on now, and it is actually not only heating, but circulating the water in the tub. And as soon as it reaches my target temperature of 41, actually it's set to 39, I'll have to change that. It'll go beep and it'll be ready to warm up my chemicals. And let's mix up some chemicals. Two grams of sodium sulfite. I've already fucked up. It was still set to ounces. Obviously some kind of drug dealer's been using these scales. In the water it goes. Potassium bromide. And here's the CD3. This stuff is a pain in the ass to get hold of. Now I'm not going to go through every single weighing of every single chemical that goes into all of these, but you get the idea. Apparently you're supposed to add and dissolve each separate thing one at a time, so I'll be doing that. So that's all the components of my ECN2 developer, all mixing up together and dissolving. The last one was the sodium carbonate. I'll put all the amounts in, in the description of the video. So I'm going to mix this up, and then I'm going to put it into the warm water bath to get up to 41 degrees. So now I'm going to mix up the ECN2 bleach, which starts with this stuff, potassium ferrous cyanide. Sounds nice. Keep away from children. Good advice. All right, so here is the ferrous cyanide sodium bromide color bleach. It's a lovely fluorescent yellow color. And in the water it goes. So I have carefully mixed up all those color chemicals. And uh, let's have a look, see what temperature they are. The ECN2, 38.2. The color bleach, 39.9. And finally, yeah, 35.9. But the fixer was the last one I mixed up, so it's gonna take a little lo longer to uh, reach, reach optimum temperature. So while those all heat up, I'm gonna have a spot of lunch. Okay, so I've loaded the film into my little Lomo tank 
and to get it up to the right temperature and to do a bit of a pre-bath, I decided I'm just going to immerse the bastard right into the 41 degree water. That way it'll get the pre-bath and it'll pre-warm as well. So I'll take some water out. In it goes. I have no idea if this is the correct thing to do, but hey, it's, it's a way to do it. Whoa, and there it goes. In the 41 degree, oh crap, still got some air in it, I think. I kept the Lomo tank immersed in the warm water for about 15 minutes and then before I started developing I mixed up some Remjet removal solution. Before it cools down I'm going to put some Remjet removal solution which is at 45, oh, I forgot that f***ing photo flow. Oh. Now some Remjet removal solution. And that's going to be in there for seven minutes. So it's a kind of a yellowish. All right, here we go. ECN developer at exactly 41 degrees, and here it goes. Alexa, set timer for three minutes. The Amazon Echo, very useful for hands-free setting of timers. So I'm sorry if your Alexa goes off while you're watching this, because when I play it on my computer, it triggers mine. Um, <laughs> I've got to say, the Alexa is really useful with... Sorry, I don't know... Alexa, shut up! Alexa, stop! The ECN2 is decidedly more piss-coloured. When rinsing the Lomo tank out between fluids, I made sure the rinsing water was warm to stop the tank from cooling down between its baths. Bleach, four minutes at 41 degrees. Alexa, set timer for four minutes. Four minutes, starting now. Well, it's rinsing out the bleach, but what happened to that? Nasty. When I was done with all my colour developing fluids, I put them back in the bottles but made sure to put a coffee filter on the funnel. That's to stop stray bits of Remjet and uh, anything contaminating fluids so they can be reused again. Be careful not to do what I did and overfill the cone because this happens and uh, it was a complete disaster. And then I found out later that I was actually pouring the Remjet removal solution into the ECN2 bottle. So I kind of doubly fucked up because um, I spilt it everywhere and luckily because it was mostly sodium carbonate and you know sodium bicarbonate it actually cleaned the surfaces that it's got spilt on quite well. Finally I hung it all up didn't seem to have any remjet on it I tried wiping it but it came up completely clean so either the remjet removal bath is super efficient or the film doesn't have much remjet on it anyway so that's a plus so I scanned it on my Wolverine and got this, which, okay, looks very yellowish and stuff, but of course that's because it's a negative. So all I need to do is to reverse it on the computer and I get full color. Mm. All right, uh, okay, it looks very blue. Um, so I color corrected that and then tinkered with the uh, brightness and the contrast. And the best I could do was this, just by kind of eyeballing it. Uh, yes, let's say it. Come on, elephant in the room. The film is as blue as a baboon's arsehole. I think it might have been the film I was using from some Russian company who re recanned Fuji 250D, which they rated as 160D. It looks like it's expired a bit, or that color shift could be due to my developing process not being quite right. Maybe I got the temperature wrong. Maybe I got the recipe of the ECN2 wrong. Anyway, here's some pictures I took as a still camera with a flash. I put my Sankyo on one frame. I got some pictures at the Exploding Cinema show. It came out really well. And finally, just some pictures on the Hampstead Heath, lightly color corrected to make it a bit less blue. So yeah, single, single images, quite happy with those. Oh yeah, and then some um, 
test cards I made with the Sankyo and this is with the Canon and this is the Bowley. Uh, unfortunately, the film started sticking in the cartridge at that point. So that was that. Now, a few notes on filming with the Video 8 camera. To get a close up of the Lomo tank rinsing, I had to get the camera all the way back here and then zoom all the way in because the camera doesn't seem to have macro. So it wouldn't focus on anything closer than 1.2 meters away. So that's, that's the eyepiece, that was the viewfinder. But I gotta say, focusing using the viewfinder, the black and white CRT in there, was actually quite nice. I didn't mind it being in black and white, and it was easy to focus, which is good because the camera's got a very, very narrow depth of field, so that everything except what you focused on usually looks a bit soft. Soft, grainy, blurry, that's what exactly the kind of criticisms they had against Super 8. And yet this, picture quality, this is what people went for instead of Super 8. This is what killed Super 8. People would prefer to film using these cameras because they have instant access to your footage and an hour long uh, filming. So to get this shot of the Cine still readout, I had to put the camera on a tripod, on a chair and on a bench and film it from way, 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 way up near the ceiling in order to get the uh, close up of the, uh, of the cine still. That's how far away I had to get the camera and zoom all the way in just to get this close up on the thing. So not the most practical of cameras, but in the end I kind of warmed to it. So yeah, I'm gonna leave you there with a bit of tinkering with my developing process. Maybe I'll open up the camera a bit wider. Maybe this stock needs a bit more, a uh, bit of overexposure to get some better colors. However, I can do color. I'm very happy with that. It won't be long now before I do color and sound. I haven't given up on black and white completely, but from now on, I've been bitten by the color bug. And hopefully I won't get some horrendous disease. I'm just rambling now. All right, see you later, bye. Stabilizer?